Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I've got four really easy and delicious side dishes for you that would be perfect for barbecues, cookouts, uh, all the summer holidays, or just really any occasion. So if you are needing some side dish inspiration, just keep watching. First up, I tried a new recipe for a barbecue macaroni salad. We love macaroni salad. And when I saw this recipe from the plain chicken, I knew that I wanted to try it because it called for mayonnaise and barbecue sauce. And if you're familiar with Red Robin, they have a campfire mayo and their campfire mayo, according to what managers have told us, is just barbecue sauce and mayonnaise and we love it. So I was like, I've got to try this. And this was really yummy. It was easy. I'd recommend you all give this a try. Let me show you how to make it. I've got the mayonnaise and barbecue sauce that I already mentioned. Just use your favorite brands. You could also use homemade barbecue sauce, apple cider vinegar, some elbow macaroni. You could, of course, use your favorite shape pasta. Garlic powder, chili powder, cayenne pepper, a red bell pepper, green onions, and then not pictured because I didn't use it is celery. I'm sorry for all you celery lovers out there. My husband loves it, but I am a celery hater. I mm -mm, Nope, can't do it. I've tried to make myself eat it, and it, it it's a no for me. <laughs> so I skipped it. Feel free to use it if you'd like, and make this your own. You could use, you know, add whatever vegetables or other add-ins you'd like. Um, also not pictured is a little bit of hot sauce that the recipe called for. I just used a little extra cayenne pepper. I'm going to start out by making like the sauce for this salad. I like to do this anytime I make any kind of pasta salads or potato salads. It's just my personal preference. I like to get everything w really well incorporated before I add in like my pasta or potatoes. But again, personal preference, you can just add everything and stir it up at once. So I'm adding in my mayonnaise, the barbecue sauce, my chopped bell pepper, the chopped green onions, the apple cider vinegar, the seasonings, and then I will add in my cooked and drained pasta. Stir that until it's well combined and then cover this with a lid. And this is going to go into the refrigerator. You could serve this immediately. I would suggest though, at least chilling it for maybe 30 minutes, um, but you can refrigerate this. I think the recipe says for up to like two days. So this is great to make in advance. Um, again, if you're doing some kind of celebration or cookout potluck, something like that. And here's the finished barbecue macaroni salad. Like I mentioned earlier, we really enjoyed this. This was yummy and I'd definitely make this again. Next, I'm making a six bean casserole. This recipe came to me through my mother-in-law. She got this years ago, I think from like a newspaper or something like that. So this is a crowd pleaser. It makes a lot. So this is really great to take to a potluck or you know, to cook out barbecue, something like that. It, it makes a really big portion. So let me show you what you'll need to make it. Quick note, I'll have the recipe typed out in the description box below. So first you'll need a half pound of sweet Italian sausage with the casing removed. My mother-in-law noted on the recipe that she uses hot Italian sausage. You'd use whatever your preference is. I prefer to use chicken or turkey sausage. Again, just use your preference. You'll need a quarter pound of pepperoni sliced thin a half pound of smoked kielbasa sliced, and again, I prefer to use the turkey, use your preference. You need a half cup of spicy barbecue sauce. And then for the beans, you need a 16 ounce can of pork and beans undrained, a 16 ounce can of red kidney beans undrained, a 16 ounce can of chili beans undrained, a 16 ounce can of white kidney beans or cannellini beans drained, a 16 ounce can of butter beans, and you'll wanna drain those, a 16 ounce can of lima beans and drain those. So those are your beans. You'll also need a can of tomato soup, three ounces of tomato paste, a half a cup of brown sugar, and then six slices of partially cooked bacon. I just prefer to use like the pre-cooked bacon. All right, so several ingredients, but it's really, really easy. Let me show you how to put this together. I've got the oven preheating to 325 degrees. You'll wanna get a really large mixing bowl, and then we're basically going to just dump all of our beans into the mixing bowl. Now with these beans, I mean, it is called six bean casserole, but really if there's a bean that you don't prefer, like I know some people don't care for lima beans or butter beans, just switch those out. Double up on one of the cans of beans or use a different kind, it really doesn't matter. So once we've got the beans in, we're going to add in the tomato soup, the tomato paste, the brown sugar, the barbecue sauce, 
and then our meat. So I'm adding in my Italian sausage. I just cooked this in a skillet until it was cooked all the way through. If you're using regular pork sausage, you'll probably wanna drain off the fat because I used chicken, I didn't have any fat though. I'm going to add in my sliced kielbasa along with the pepperoni and then I'm going to stir everything until it's combined really well. Now, if you wanted to keep this vegetarian aside from the pork and beans, of course, um, you could just leave out the meats, but it really is good and with all the different meats in there and it makes it really, really super filling. So once I've got everything stirred really well, I am going to place the mixture into a grease casserole dish. You wanna use a large nine by 13 for this. Like I said, it makes a lot. So once I've added that in, I'm going to arrange my pre-cooked bacon over the top. And then this is going to go into the preheated oven and it will bake uncovered for about an hour and a half. Now you can serve this hot, you can serve it cold, you can serve it at room temperature. And like I said, it makes at least 16 generous servings. So again, great for potlucks, cookouts, barbecues, get togethers, block parties, all kinds of different things. So we really enjoy this. This is just a family, um, you know, favorite that we make at special occasions and everything. So I recommend you all give this a try. Next, I'm making a caprese pasta salad. I didn't follow a recipe for this, but I will find a recipe similar to what I did and have it linked in the description box below for you. First, you're going to need some kind of pasta. I had about a half a box of this mini farfalle pasta in my pantry that I needed to use up. So that's what I'm going to use. You can use your favorite shape, of course. And I'm doing like a half recipe um, just for my husband and I. If you were making this for a get together for your family or a barbecue or something like that, I would use a whole box of pasta. We're going to need some pesto. Now I only had about a half of this jar and I wanted to use it up. So I'm also going to use some mayonnaise um, to kind of stretch the pesto a little bit, but also we like um, pasta salads that are more creamy, but um, you can of course skip the mayonnaise, especially if you're making this for a cookout or barbecue and you wanna have this um, setting outside, you don't wanna worry about it getting warm or anything like that. You could of course skip the mayonnaise altogether. We're going to need some cherry tomatoes these mozzarella pearls. And then if you have some fresh basil, that would also be extra yummy. I didn't have any on hand though, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, let me show you how to put this together real quick. In my bowl, I'm going to add in the mayonnaise and the pesto and stir that until it's combined really well. And as I was stirring it, I decided I wanted to thin it out just a little bit. So I grabbed some of this olive oil. This is from the Nashville Olive Oil Company, not sponsored in any way. I just really like their products. They have a couple different locations here in Nashville. They sell olive oils, vinegars, seasonings, and everything. I've mentioned that before on my channel. Um, but I decided to add that to give it a little extra flavor and thin that out just a little bit, like I said. So next I'm going to add in my cooked and drained pasta. When I make pasta salads, I like to rinse the pasta in cold water. Normally I don't do that, like I said, just for pasta salads. Um, you can do that or skip it. But I'm adding the drained pasta and then I'm going to add in my grape or cherry tomatoes. I cut them into quarters. And then I'm gonna add in the mozzarella pearls. Stir this until it's combined really well and then that's it. You could serve this right away. I'm going to pop it into the refrigerator though for about 30 minutes and then it will be ready to serve. And like I said, if you have fresh basil, you could chop that up and put that on top. Um, but this is so delicious. It's super light and refreshing, so yummy. Finally, I'm making a watermelon feta salad. Now I had this salad for the first time a couple years ago. I was a little hesitant to try it, but one bite and I was in love. This is delicious. The ingredients might sound a little bit weird if you've never had it before, but trust me, it is delicious and it is perfect for summertime. So I recommend you give this a try. Here are the ingredients that you'll need. Not very many, really simple. You'll need some fresh watermelon that we're going to cut into cubes some feta cheese. You could use some red onion if you would prefer. I didn't have any on hand and we don't really necessarily prefer it anyway, so I'm gonna skip that. Next, I'm using some fresh basil. You could also use fresh mint if you would prefer to do that. And I didn't use a specific recipe for this, um, but I will do my best to try to find one similar to what I did and link it in the description box below for you. I decided to also add on some of this balsamic glaze. I get this at Trader Joe's. This is optional. You don't have to use it. If you don't have it, you could um, make your own, just reduce down some balsamic vinegar or just use balsamic vinegar. All right, let me show you how to put this together. This is so, so easy. 
All right, in the bowl here, I've got the cubed watermelon. You could also do this on a platter. I'm going to sprinkle the feta cheese over the watermelon. Next, I'm going to add in the basil. Now, when I went to use this basil, it was rotten. I was so sad. I was like, how did this go bad so quickly? So I just used some dried basil. I really would have preferred the fresh. I would suggest you using fresh. I mean, if you don't have it on hand, it's fine. Um, but with so few ingredients in this, it, it really does make a difference between the fresh and the dried. But again, either way, it's delicious. Now, once I've got the basil, I'm going to drizzle over some of that balsamic uh, reduction. And that's it. Like I said, this is so ridiculously easy and it is great of course at room temperature you don't have to worry about really anything going bad on you and it's just so so yummy the little saltiness of the feta cheese with the watermelon oh delicious like i said if you've never given this a try i highly recommend you give it a try i really think you'll like it all right that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching i hope that you like this video if you did please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and i hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much Bye bye